to tell us die. This is the word that has been found on ancient tax bills, business transactions, and sales receipts dating back to the time Jesus was crucified and even before. Think of a rubber stamp put on a bill, paid, all in caps, P-A-I-D, in red, to bring closure to a bill or to a mortgage that is finally paid off, to tell us die. It is finished, paid in full. Jesus came to give his life a ransom for many. The ransom has now been paid. Today, Jesus has purchased a place for you and for me in paradise. We owe God nothing. Nothing now except our thanks and our praise. If there was ever a time that Satan had a panic attack or cried out in anguish and defeat, it is now, this day, when Christ is crucified because now his defeat is secure. All his accusations are now proven false once for all. This is the day Christ crushes the head of the serpent. We should tell the world the good news. It is good Friday. Our Lord has cried to tell us die. Paid in full. It is finished. It happened on that hill called the place of a skull, also called Golgotha or Calvary. The skull is a picture of death that could be seen even hewn in the rock by rain and wind and seismic activity. That day, the ground shook with the death of the eternal Son of God. What dies on Calvary is as important as who dies. Our Lord dies there. But also, our guilt dies. Our shame dies. Our condemnation dies and is buried with Jesus. When you and I want to return to an old habit, unhealthy behavior, or a sinful way of thinking, we can preach a one-word sermon to ourselves in that moment to tell us die. It is finished. I will not go back to what Christ has already put to death. It has no power in Christ. To tell us die sums up St. Paul's words in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. It is finished, the Lord cries. When the devil comes round and whispers in our ears and accuses us or condemns us, we can lay hold of this one word Christ cries from the cross to tell us die. It's a lie from the father of lies. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It 
is finished. God has given us a good Friday so that all our days would be better. Make all your days good by that same word, tetelestai. Tell the good news to your loved ones every day. Tetelestai, I have forgiven you. I will not hold anything against you. You are free from my harboring of bitterness. The wrong that you have done against me has already been put to death on the cross of Calvary. Grandparents, parents, aunts, uncles, let's drive that word like nails into the heads of our kids, our young people, to tell us that we love you. We accept you exactly the way you are. Our love is complete. We will not let anger and resentment, disappointment or shame fester in our families. It stops here. It's finished. The word tetelestai echoes against these sanctuary walls every time we gather. Tetelestai reverberates in our hearts every time we confess our sins together and hear the words of forgiveness. We celebrate that God is a God of second chances. His mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. As God's people, we are a lifeline to those drowning in sin and sorrow and unforgiveness all around us in a world that does not understand forgiveness or the transaction to tell us that. You and I are Christ's voice in his mirror to the community as we cry out to those around us to tell us that. God welcomes all sinners because he died for all. And so Good Friday is not a day to sulk. It's not a day to feel sorry for Jesus, even though his suffering breaks our hearts clean. And all that is rotten, all that is evil dies there a sudden and complete death. And so the word is a celebratory word, tetelestai. Today is the day Christ accomplished his mission to forgive, to restore, to heal, and to triumph through death. It's the death of death to tell us that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.